So I think it's important to start with that, with that framework. And now that we have the mental framework for how to think about this stuff, we can kind of dig into the minutia of how to implement it. So where I want to start is with testing a continuous integration. So what do we mean by tests? There's a unit tests and integration tests. So unit tests are what tests for individual module functionality are called. Integration tests are what tests for the whole system or potentially even the interface between the system you're responsible for and something you're not responsible for is called. Continuous integration means that you run your tests and maybe some other software development process like linting every time you push code to, a, to your repository and, it, and, and before you deploy anything. So continuous because every time you uh, push and then integration because it runs all the tests. So SAS for con continuous integration is kind of the way people do it unless you're at a big company. Um, you have CircleCI, Travis, Jenkins can be hosted on-prem, BuildKite can be kind of hosted on-prem. And then the other interesting and important thing to, to know here is container, containerization, and uh, that's what Docker is for. And that means it's a self-enclosed environment with like exactly pinned dependencies and of all sorts, including the operating, yeah, including the operating system, the libraries, any binaries you might be using, and your Python environment for running the tests. So what I'm going to talk about in this continuous integration uh, part is the training system test, the validation test, the functionality test. I think where it maps onto the ML test score is, is roughly here. The first thing I want to say is Circle CI, Travis, stuff like that. Uh, software as a service. You basically integrate it with your GitHub, GitLab, or Bitbucket, or whatever repository, such that every time you commit to it and push to the repository, it kicks off a job um, somewhere that runs it. The jobs are usually defined as code, but it, they run in the Docker container. And then they can also store some results in some kind of artifact uh, repository that you can log into and view the results. They don't usually have GPUs because this is kind of for mass you know, software development use. Uh, CircleCI has a free plan if you're a solo practitioner. That's a nice way to kind of get started with it. Jenkins and BuildKite. So Jenkins has the real, the, you know, it's an old school thing. It's still very relevant and good. It's probably used the most out of all the continuous integration tools. It's something you install on your own servers. It's very configurable. BuildKite is kind of a new thing that, that, that I like. Um, it's, a, it's a nice option for running it on either your own hardware or in the cloud or partially on your own hardware, partially in the cloud. Uh, I think it's a good option for the scheduled training system test, which might take a long time and require GPUs, because you can run it on your own hardware, which can have GPUs and not, you know, you don't spend like $100 every single night just for uh, running your training test. So yeah, it's very configurable, very flexible. The way BuildKite works is there's this notion of a pipeline that's like things that you want to happen, and then you have a build kite agent. So that can run anywhere, could run in the cloud, could run on-prem, on could get kicked off automatically when you submit your, your code. You could automatically launch an agent. Um, and then the agent looks for jobs that are outstanding and then reports the results to the <coughs> dashboard. So it's quite nice. If you're a little bit more advanced in like DevOps stuff, I would recommend looking at it. If not, then I would just use CircleCI. Uh, 